The goal of the COBRA study was to see if we could find a therapy that helped in protecting the brain after a brain injury, but also that helped in recovery and plasticity as the brain recovers from a brain injury over the subsequent weeks and months. So this was the first study that was focused including therapy on the subacute period. Therapy in this particular study went on for 90 days. The drug that was chosen is a drug that is a nutraceutical. It's, it's widely used in uh, countries in Europe, particularly Southern Europe. It's also used off-label in the United States. It's available at health food stores uh, and places like that. And many uh, folks after a traumatic brain injury will use it off-label. And there was some indication from animal studies as well as uh, observations in humans that it would have some benefit. So we wanted to definitively determine whether this drug helped and particularly whether it helped in the repair and plasticity. Unfortunately, the clinical trial showed pretty definitively that this particular drug did not help in improving uh, recovery or improving outcome after traumatic brain injury. Uh, over 1,200 patients were enrolled uh, and the results were actually quite clear. The study was conducted very compulsively uh, by very highly uh, qualified and, and, and trained study personnel. So, I mean, I think that question was answered definitively. Well, the Cobert study was uh, fairly unique among clinical trials that have been done in traumatic brain injury in, for a number of reasons. First of all, it was the first study to include people who were in the so-called complicated mild TBI category. This is actually the majority of people who get admitted to hospitals in the United States with a TBI. These are folks who've had a concussion, but by the time they get to the emergency room, they're awake and alert and following commands, but on the CT scan have some trauma-related abnormality in their brain. They have small hemorrhages, small contusions, some kind of CT abnormality. And uh, the, the routine uh, care of these people includes admitting them to the hospital, usually for a day or two to make sure that they don't get worse. And, and then uh, discharge with varying degrees of follow-up. So this was the first study to include uh, that population, and that was approximately two-thirds of the entire COBRA cohort. It was also the first study to include uh, people in uh, elderly or at least advanced middle age people. Most prior trials uh, viewed age as a confounder and excluded everyone who was older than approximately 50 or 55. So COBRA included those older individuals, which are a rapidly growing part of the population that is at very high risk of TBI. So uh, likewise, the natural history of TBI in, in those folks is gonna be very important, and that is a lot of data that was collected in COBRA that would be of great value uh, to the field going forward. Well, I think number one, it, it should provide very clear evidence that CDP choline is, is not useful. And I think uh, uh, people who may be tempted to buy this in, in health food stores uh, should, should probably not use their money in better ways. Likewise, uh, in other places of the world where, where this is being used, uh, likewise, something else should be tried. Uh, I think the real long-term value is, is going to be in allowing us to design better clinical studies, particularly in those two populations, meaning the complicated mild TBI, the, the folks who are awake, but awake and alert, but with abnormal CT scans, and also the, the elderly or advanced middle-aged people.